Hello! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a cursor tracked drawing arm in Live 2D and apply it to your model for use with all sorts of things like art streams and the like. Now I'm going to be specifically making a drawing pen arm in this video, but this concept could be applied to other types of things. For example, you could be holding a snack or something and you just want it to track with the cursor rather than using hand tracking, for example. So to begin with, we're going to actually need our drawing arm. So this is going to have to be an extra asset for your Live 2D. If you haven't made one already for your model, you can re-import it and add the extra parts in. So for my character here, I have extra sleeve and the hand, and you can separate the fingers, but it's not entirely necessary. So you can have this whole arm be a single piece, for example. Obviously I've got most of my arm hidden by the sleeve here, but you can have it as just the standard arm if you don't have long sleeves like me, and that would be separated at the elbow. So obviously I have everything set up here, and I'll show you just how it works first. So I have a toggle to get rid of the arm first, then I have another toggle to get the drawing arm in, and then obviously the X and Y. So let's start from scratch, shall we? So the first thing we're going to want to do is make this arm appear, because obviously I don't have three arms usually. What we're going to need to do is make this lower arm disappear and make this arm appear. So we're going to set up a toggle for that first. So we're going to create a new parameter for... We're going to name this just so we keep everything nice and organized. And we're going to keep the range at 0 to 1 since it's just a toggle. We're going to find our lower arm here, I believe it's this one. I already have a bunch of stuff set up, so just make sure you know where it is. We're going to create a new deformer. Um, call it lower arm. Right. This up here. And we're just going to pop a couple of keyframes on here. And at 1, this is going to be at opacity 0. That makes that lower arm disappear there. And then we're going to want this drawing arm to appear. So we're going to find that on our list. You can put this on one parameter. I personally separate them because I have several arm toggles. And we want this to be at zero at zero. So we can see the toggles going like that. There we are, so we now have the toggle set now. So now we just need to make it move. So to start, we're going to create a new warp deformer. And I'm going to call this arm draw x, y. And we're going to create two new parameters. So this is going to be draw x. And we're going to keep this at the same default range. And draw y. There we are, and this is going to make up the basis for our cursor tracking. And we can create three key forms on both of these on this new deformer that we've just made. So now we're going to set up the movements themselves. And we have to imagine this being a box of sorts. You might find it easier to combine the draw X and Y, and then you can imagine this as the box of movement. Obviously our screen is a rectangle, basically. Um, and you want to try and have the hand move in a rectangle. If you're thinking of using a tablet prop, you can import it into Live 2D and then work around that. But for now, we're just going to set this up as a basic rectangle and see how that looks later. So the actual setup might vary depending on how your character's clothes are, for example. So with my character, there's going to be a bit more set up with the sleeve here, uh, but for a standard arm you might find it's a bit easier to make it move around. You should do what makes it look good for your character, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I'm actually going to set up a rotation deformer under my warp for just the sleeve here. So this new rotation deformer will prevent my warp deformer from deforming my hand here because I don't want that to be stretched or squished too much, basically. And if you're using a plain arm, 
I'm pretty sure you could just use a rotation deformer for the whole lower arm part for the drawing. And we're going to go ahead and start setting these up here. I might speed this bit up because it can be a little bit tedious, but hopefully you can sort of see the process that I'm going through to get everything set up. And then once we've got our X and Y set up, we're obviously going to combine them and then synthesize our corners. And let's see how that looks. Obviously I've just rushed through this basically, but I would put a little bit more attention to detail with the sleeves here because they are warping a little bit strangely, but we're just getting the basic idea. So obviously our sleeve is moving here now, our lower arm. But our upper arm is still very stiff and that's a problem because when our arms move the whole thing moves not just the lower arm so we're going to need to set up a deformer for our upper arm as well this will be separate from our standard upper arm movements that we've already added to the model okay so let's go ahead and create a new warp deformer for our upper arm and you might be fast to just set it up here so if we set it up with drawing X and Y, we can go ahead and set up everything. But there's going to be a problem with this. We're going to have everything on a toggle, right? If we do not have this set to the toggle, then it's going to try and move with the cursor even if we have the toggle not active. And I'll be showing an example on screen of my arm dislocating. Yeah, this is not pretty. So what we're going to have to do first is before we set it to our drawing X and Y here, we're going to want to pop on two keyforms onto our arm draw toggle and then set our keyforms back onto X and Y here. And we're only going to want to set this up when arm draw toggle is at one. So that's when our arm is actually visible. So this way, anything that you set up will not be set up for when the toggle is not active. So when it's at zero. This is a cool trick to have for other toggles as well. You have a part that's moving on a toggle. You want to make sure that you set it up like this so that it doesn't move when the toggle is not active. So I'm going to go ahead and set up our upper arm here to go along with our drawing arm. And you can see here when I've synthesized the corners that I do need to do some fixes just so that it's tracking with the arm properly. You might not have this problem if you're just using a bare arm because in which case you could actually use rotation deformers on both as well as glue. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix this here. And there we are. Obviously this isn't perfect because I've kind of rushed it. But we've got the basic idea of the arm here and all that's left to do now is to export it and get everything set up for use in our tracker. All right, so once that's exported, we're going to need to open up our live 2D viewer. Now this should have come with the program, so just type that into your search bar and pop that up. And we're going to need to drag our model into our viewer here. So we're going to have to set up our toggles in here. So we're going to file, add. We're going to add a expression and we're going to call this drawing arm. There we go. And you'll see a new folder pop up on the left here, which says expressions and our new expression here. And all we're going to need to do is scroll down. Here we are. We're going to want to find our arm toggles that we just made. We're going to want to select both of them and set them both at one. And that's all we need to do in here. So we can export all expression motion. And after exporting this, we can go ahead and open it up in our tracking program. So I've gone ahead and loaded this into our YouTube studio here, and I'm going to show you how to set it up in this program. So what we're going to want to do is start by going to the setting. It's going to be this tab here, the third one, which is going to be all of our parameter settings first. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to add two new parameter inputs. We're going to have the first one set as mouse position X. And then the second one input is obviously going to be mouse position Y. 
And for our outputs, we simply just set these as our draw X and draw Y respectively. And you can already see that they're starting to move around in our parameter setup. But obviously we need to add the toggle as well. So we're going to go to the fourth tab, hotkey settings. We're going to add an action to set expression. And it should just pop up. Make sure that you're saving it into the same folder as your model. And we're just going to set this on one for the moment. And let's try this out. So there's the arm. And as you can see, it is now tracking my cursor around the screen. So for example, VTube Studio actually has a tablet asset on it. And you can see I can draw on it. <laughs> and I do hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm always happy to help. Even if it's not related to this drawing arm, feel free to leave it in the comments anyway and i'll try and get to it as quickly as i can do like the video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful it really does help us out a lot and with that i hope you have a wonderful day and have a lovely time rigging all those wonderful drawing arms in live 2d